A beautiful day for some beach volleyball on Pac-12 Networks. Yes, we're in Tucson, Arizona, and no, you do not need an ocean to have a beach. We are at Bear Down Beach on the campus of the University of Arizona for the Wildcat Spring Challenge. I'm Anne Marie Anderson alongside Holly McPeak. We're excited about this two-day tournament brought to you on Pac-12 Networks over the next 48 hours. We'll take you through today's schedule of action, Holly. There's so much going on. Five duels today. And we're starting with Arizona State versus the Red hot team from Cal rank 14. Second you'll see Stetson number 17 against Arizona number 15 and then a couple matches later Stetson versus Cal again two ranked teams which is going to be really exciting. High level competition going on all day today. Action continues tomorrow as well. Three more matches tomorrow. Anne Marie and Holly we're glad you joined us. Let's focus in on this duel. Cal you mentioned it 14th ranked much improved over years past. Well what Cal did really well is they recruited. They have five impact freshmen, four in the lineup right now, but they've got a deep bench as well, and that's made a huge difference in the whole feel of their program. They expect to win. They're 14-3 and three already against a very young Arizona State team who's, who's really led by underclassmen, so they're building. Yeah, they are. And let's take a look at the rules of the duels, if you will. There's five courts of action that happen concurrently here. Holly, take us through the rest of the format. Well, we get to play five matches at, at once, which is exciting because it all comes down to the wire. We'll play best two out of three. So the first and second sets are to 21, win by two. A third set, if necessary, is to 15 points. And the first program to win three of the five wins the duel. Lots going on. If it sounds confusing, well, it's lots of fun. The action really starts ripping through fast. We're going to focus our attention and start the action on court number one. Arizona State and Cal. For Arizona State, Quinn Johnson and Mia Rivera facing Alexia Inman and Mima Mjorkovic. This is the red hot Cal team, 10 and 3 at the ones position. Alexia Inman, a freshman from Manhattan Beach, and Mima Murkovic from Irvine, another freshman who plays on the indoor team for Cal as well. Yeah, we're seeing less and less crossover players as the sport gets older, but when you have a talent like Murkovic or her summer partner, uh, Catherine Plummer of Stanford, they have played together before they entered college. You let them do both, indoor and beach. Definitely. Mima Merkovic is one of the best in her age division in the country. She's got great experience. And again, she's going back and forth, much like Catherine Plummer from Stanford. Mima plays indoor at a very high level for Cal and beach as well, representing the USA internationally. And one of the changes, uh, one of the many changes for Mirkovic as she went to Cal to play beach, when she was playing with Catherine Plummer, she was receiving all the serves. Everybody going at her. Now in this partnership, she's become a primary setter. Yeah, it's a whole new role actually for both players. Alexia Inman, usually the bigger of her partnerships when she plays at six foot one, but now she's getting the challenge of receiving all the serves. And it was interesting, I mean, for you, that was a, the role that you had much of your career as well. And kind of lets her hone her skills in terms of craftiness. Ball up. Well, I think you have to find a rhythm, figure out what situations to do what. When you're getting every serve, you're seeing every type of defense. You see Alexia Inman use her length on that play. On the right side, Murkovic pushes her to the net. Nice high line shot, beating the big block of Quinn Johnson at 6-3 for Arizona State. On two, to the back. Joust at the net. Murkovic takes her time, puts up a nice set. Cross. Beautiful cut shot by Alexia Inman. And then behind Quinn Johnson, you've got Mia Rivera, a very good defender who cannot run down this cut shot from Inman. Mirkovich approaching. Big Quinn Johnson in the way, and Mirkovich finds the back of the court. Mima is so physical. She gets up, she's got a big heavy arm, and she's got all the shots. So that's why you're going to not see her receive a lot of serves. You talked about the youth of Arizona State. Bianca Ariano, Whitney Follett, the ones pairs last year graduated. This is the little bit of youth that they do have. Quinn Johnson and Mia Rivera, both seniors 
for the Sand Devils. Yeah, these are the only upperclassmen on the whole roster for Arizona State, at least of the five pairs that are competing. Everybody else is underclassmen except for Katie Cross, who's a junior transfer from South Carolina. Right, and there are, as you point out, three other seniors, but they are not in the top ten pairs. They will be celebrated on Senior Day tomorrow at Para which is their home courts. Big block by Quinn Johnson. And anytime you've got a six foot three blocker on the other side of the net, if you're setting up your partner, you need to cover. That time, Alexia Inman, not ready to cover that block. Quinn Johnson serving. Johnson still there, closing down the net. Again. Goes over Johnson, looks for the line, and gets it. Right now, Quinn Johnson really in the face of Alexia Inman, putting a lot of pressure on her, but Alexia Inman gets a second chance. And this, after the block, covers herself, and then calmly goes that short little poke shot right over the blocker. If you're Quinn Johnson, you got to try and turn and get that ball. One of the many challenges for indoor players adjusting to the sand game, of course, is being able to pull and being able to turn. Well, there's much more responsibility. It's it's the challenge of two players covering the whole court. So you have to do much more opposed to the indoor game when there's five other players on the court with you. Well executed cut shot right there by Alexia Inman. She works hard all summer long. She's from Manhattan Beach. But some of these players take the summer off, rest. But Alexia Inman <laughs> is getting her reps in every day on the beach and competing in all the tournaments up and down the coast. While they're sleeping, she's trying to get better. Exactly. And, th and that's you know, if you're going to come into a program like Cal and make a difference, you want to work and you want to establish yourself. So to come in as a freshman and hold down the number one position with Nima Murkovic, you got to be ready. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are looking at this game, the way it's growing, the way it's growing at the youth levels, and talking about sports specializing. Emin's a great look at somebody who did not. She was a very high-level softball player, played travel softball. Her father told us that's why I think she gets that great arm. Yeah, it, anytime you can play multiple sports growing, it up, growing up, I think it's getting harder and harder. Um, but her dad also played his freshman year of baseball here at Arizona and said he hasn't been back since. So kind of fun to be back watching his daughter compete. Yeah, and speaking of great arms, he hit over 300 at Davis as a baseball player. So part of it was from her own softball and part of it, dad, genetics. Emin and Murkovic having plenty of success this season. 10-3 and three record as partners. It, it, an interesting strategy for Cal. They didn't start Inman and Murkovic at, at the one spot. So they kind of worked them. I think they started at three and worked their way up. Kind of played into it and really earned it. Wanted to work hard and establish themselves. And I think that's a good thing. When you're a freshman, you just walk into that one spot. You don't appreciate it as much as earning it. Yeah, head coach uh, Megan Owusu, Owusu saying they weren't happy about it. Taking a look at some of the other courts, too. Carballo and Lundberg trailing Bark and Duick by two. And again, we'll continue to keep you updated all across the other courts. And yes, we will visit the other courts as well throughout the day and throughout the duels. Right now, Arizona State up 9-7 with a tough serve, getting Alexia Inman in a little bit of passing trouble. That's another thing. It's not just hitting as a challenge, but you're getting all sorts of tough serves, different looks from the defense. And Quinn Johnson at 6-3 is touching a lot of balls at the net. So those are the challenges you face when you're getting all the balls in serve-receive. You see here Alexi Anman passing that ball forward. Markovic is able to put up a good set and then high off the touch of Quinn Johnson. Going to the corner, making Johnson look for it, perfectly placed. Well, Mia Rivera passed that ball and set up her offense really well. She gets a good set, sees the block, goes up high and over to the corner. That's a tough ball to defend. If you're Cal, you need to put more service pressure on Arizona State. Johnson up, hammered cross court, released by Inman. Let's see if Cal's able to step up their service game and, and really open things up with their defense. Good power cross court from Alexia Inman. Cal trouble play. Johnson patient. 
Johnson putting up some lovely sets as well. She certainly is, and that's her role. At 6-3, she's not getting a lot of serve, so she has to get really good at that second touch, setting up her partner. Right now, Alexia Inman needs to be aggressive. Yes, I know Quinn Johnson's a big block, but at six foot one, Alexia Inman can go up and physically challenge her if she's more aggressive. And there's the big block of Johnson yet again. So while well, the score is 12-9 here on court one, let's look over to court number two. Cal is making Sidney Palmer handle most of the passing for Arizona State. Lindahl, down the line. That was beautiful. Beautiful set by Jessica Gaffney to Ia Lindahl, a sophomore. She has a great hand contact. She's quick twitch, covers the court well defensively. This is Ia Lindahl serving. That ball long. Wind starting to gust a little bit. Gaffney goes to the other corner, turns it away. Jessica Gaffney for that ninth point for Cal. The wind definitely picking up, but both Gaffney and Lindahl, good experience on the beach, and you see that shot choice by Gaffney is a good one. On court four, bottom of your screen, Marino and Schaefer leading Carballo and Braun 13 to eight for the four pairs. Jessica Gaffney, the blocker for Cal, a little bit late on her push. You want to make sure your hands are across the net, cutting off the angles of the offensive player. Five pairs, Baldwin and Plaster up on Campbell and Micheletti. Important to note as Holly went through the rules, it doesn't matter if it's your five pairs, the one pair, it counts the same, one point. Three out of five wins the duel. It's really important. That's why you want depth from one to five. You want five strong pairs competing for you because you don't know which pair it's going to come down to to win the duel. Yeah, Micheletti and Campbell for Cal, a strong five pair. Let's go back to the action on court number one. Timeout is over. Johnson and Rivera with the upper hand, but out of the timeout, Cal point. And you know Mima Markovic is telling her best friend and partner, Alexi Enman, stay aggressive. You can go up and play that physical game. That time just choosing a nice high shot over the block. Yeah, double freshman pairs at your ones. We don't see it very often. UCLA's McNamara twins started at the ones as freshmen as well. It's funny, as we were talking while you and I are preparing for this match, I had to hesitate for a second going, Markovic isn't still a freshman, is she? Because she played such a large role in the indoor team. It feels like she's a veteran already. Yeah, she's a leader. Very experienced, high-level volleyball player on the beach and indoors for Cal. Just what an asset for the Cal Beach Volleyball Program and indoor program. Putting up a nice set. Alexia Inman going up high. Another nice line shot by Alexia Inman. If you're Arizona State, change it up. Block her angle because she's getting really comfortable with that line shot. No one on. Ball was long. Retreating blocker. So when the blocker pulls off the net to play defense, you want to hit that shot either aggressively or deep over their head. That one missing long by Rivera. On two. Johnson's length. Yeah, anytime you have Quinn Johnson, a lefty at six foot three, if Mia Rivera can control that first contact, you would like to see Quinn Johnson attacking that second ball. We're not getting many opportunities to see Murkovich hammer, but Inman is putting it away. And Arizona State's not making any adjustments. This time, Alexa Inman gets up and uses her physicality, hammering that ball cross court. I like that hard approach by her. Well, and you're talking about the adjustments. There's no coaches on court number one, and that's another difference in this game versus the indoor game. You're left to coach yourself. First of all, you can't even talk to your, or your players if you're a coach during action. But there's only so many coaches, and there's five courts of action. Somebody's got to be left alone. And in this case, it's the ones. Yeah, it, they're probably the most experienced of the pairs. But this has been a tough spot for Arizona State at 5-11 and 11 at the one spot. But it's always, I mean, you're facing the best teams in the country at that one spot. So that's a challenging spot to be in. Yeah, even the programs that don't have a lot of depth, 
often have a strong ones pair. That's where you see the great programs when they have all five that have depth. But for Johnson and Rivera, they never get a break. Watch this play here. Good cut shot. Not a step. I thought that Cal felt like that play might have been dead early on. But With the ball on. Yeah, yeah but it Arizona too. State continued to play, and the ball was not called on. You always have to finish the play. And it looks like ball wide. It looks like Inman's really aware of that block. Court three scores tied up. Carballo, Lundberg, Bark, and Duick. Now one point. Right now, I feel like Cal needs to bring the set down, stay aggressive. They're kind of playing a high game into Quinn Johnson's strength. But that time, Alexei Inman able to go high hands off the block. Arizona State every time blocking line and digging the hard angle. Well, and it's hard to figure out the wind. At least it is for me. I'll be interested to see what you think because it feels to me like it's gusting a bit. It's not any kind of steady play with it wind. I agree. It, it's definitely gusting. That ball did not clear the net on two. So that's a cow ball. But I, anytime you feel it gusting, and as a player, you can feel it, you want to play a little bit lower game and make sure you get your feet to the ball as an offensive player. Murkovic will have a swing here. What a shot. Oh, it was just wide. Trying to play towards the line. Well, Mima Murkovic doesn't get a lot of opportunities to hit the ball for Cal, and she gets one and picks the right spot, just misses by an inch. Still talking. Johnson. A broken play works out for Cal's in minute Murkovic. I like Mima Murkovic talking to her friend Alexei Inman, keeping her going in that play, but Alexei Inman sticks her arm out, gets it, and then Murkovic with the kill to the deep line. Hammered long, another Cal point as Inman and Mirkovic take the lead. Let's pop over to court number four and check in on the action there. This is Katie Cross and Sierra Flood versus Cal's Caroline Schaefer and Mia Marino. Marino and Schaefer, a two-point lead. And another point for Marino and Schaefer. Remember that 21 wins a set. Mia Marino has played almost every pair spot for Cal. She played at ones one year, twos as well. She's been an impact player from the beginning, but she's battled back injuries. And this is the first time in her career where she feels like she has it under control. She's rehabbed it. If she needs to rest, she tells the coaches she's doing a great job managing it and playing really well for Cal. They're 14 and one at the fours pair. Touched on the block. Marino sets. Oh, you could tell that one was going to be unloaded. Schaefer puts it away. I love the way Caroline Schaefer plays this game. She's really aggressive at the net. She's only a freshman. She's from Northern California, Arinda, but gets up and wants to hit the ball. And these two players really complement each other well. Yeah, and for Schaefer, I mean, she still spent last year playing indoor club. So she's still relatively new to the game. This is her first time full beach volleyball for Cal, and she's just getting better all the time. Uh, Megan Wusu telling us they're one of the top four pairs in the country. Let's pop over to court number five and take a look at Kate Baldwin, Samantha Plaster, Micheletti, and Campbell of Cal. You see Kate Baldwin and Samantha Plaster taking a timeout. At Micheletti and Campbell leading that one 20 to 17. And this is another hot pair from Cal, 14 and 1 at the five spots. Grace Campbell, Mac, Maddie Micheletti, both from Manhattan Beach. Court number one action in the first set coming down to the wire. 19 17 lead for Inman and Mirkovich. We're seeing Johnson attack much more on two. 
over the heads. Mirkovic fired up. This is set point for Cal on court number one. Well, this set has been pretty close, and Cal's just pulled away at the end of the first set. Mia Mirkovic ready for that over on two, picks a good spot, and then attacks the retreating blocker. Yep. And the three pairs, Carballo and Lundberg of Arizona State, just picked up a first set win. And that's key because it is set point for Cal on court one, court four, and court five. Right now, Cal at set point. All they need to do to clinch this first set is side out. Bears up. Wide. Yeah, that ball set tight to the net. Quinn Johnson reaching over, putting the pressure on Alexia Inman. And it's set point number three on court one. It remains set point on court four as well. Court four, cross flood, Marino Schaefer also set point. Quinn Johnson pass on court one. Put away, meanwhile, on court four. Cal clinches set number one on both court four and court one. Mima Markovic on court one and Mia Marino with the final kill on court four for Cal. Yep, and it remains a set point on court number five for Cal as well. And there it is put away on court number five. So set one to Cal on one, four, five. Set number one to Arizona State on court three. Last time these two programs faced off, it was a 4-1 win for Cal over Arizona State, but it's been a while. The only court still in action in the first set right now are the twos. And it is a three-point lead for Gaffney and Lindahl. Lindahl serving. Here's Palmer. Right down the middle, but is it long? It is. Jessica Gaffney's long at the net for Cal, but she likes to drop off the net and play defense, and that puts a lot of pressure on the hitter when they're a little bit smaller. Looking for the corner, Gaffney. Overhand dig. Comes around that, goes wide, and that ends the 5-1 run for Cal. I like that Jessica Gaffney went aggressive, but she was going for an impossible angle into the win. One of the things that I found really interesting talking to Brad Keenan this week, the head coach for Arizona State, is he said they train with no wind. Because yeah. every time we're here, and again, it's in Tucson, an hour and a half away, but it's windy here. But yeah. in Tempe, there's no wind. But have you been to the Para Club? I have not. Oh, I have. It's all surrounded. And so that's really what the issue is. It's almost like the court's a little bit sunken uh, in a way in there. So while there's tumbleweeds blowing across Tempe, I could see how the Parrot Club would be a little protected. It'll be interesting because Stetson is going to go out there tomorrow to face Arizona State. And so they'll play in completely different conditions. Here you see the nice cover play by Arizona State, but hit that long on their second attempt. Set point for Cal. Gaffney pulling off. Tricky. Put away by Lindahl and Cal. Win set number one on four of five courts in their duel against Arizona State. This is the first of five duels on Pac-12 Network today. Arizona and State and Cal set two next. You're watching Pac-12. You're watching Pac-12 Arizona. Pac-12 Beach Volleyball is brought to you by State Farm. Here to help life go right. Welcome to Bear Down Beach for the Wildcat Spring Challenge. This is the first of five duels of action today in a two-day tournament here on Pac-12 Networks. I'm Amory Anderson alongside three-time Beach Volleyball Olympian Holly McPeak. Set number one to Cal on four of the five courts. Holly, we're going to turn our attention to court number three. 
Carballo and Lundberg of Arizona State, the lone Sand Devil team to take set number one over Bryce Bark and Maddie Duick. And when we talk to Brad Keenan, he talks about this team. Ellie Lundberg at 5'11 is a little bit undersized as a blocker, but she and Caitlin Carballo have really nice chemistry together, and they battle well, and they scrap, and they work hard, and that's really important. Chemistry is one of the most important factors in beach volleyball. There you see Caitlin Carballo awesome. dig a nice ball, trying to hit that deep line, just missing wide. Well, and Carbal Carballo is one of those players who really devoted herself in high school to junior beach volleyball. How have you seen her game progress over the years? Well, when I first saw her, she was a junior, I believe, in high school and, and, and very athletic, has a nice arm. She's only 5'9", but she's a lefty and just sees the court well and really committed herself to beach volleyball. Brad Keenan loves her jump top spin serve. You're going to see it right now. She's very aggressive and she's got a nice hand that puts good direction on the ball. That time missing just long, but it's very aggressive and it can score points for them quickly. Caitlin Carballo has a younger sister, Hallie Carballo. Very high level junior player who we'll see someday soon in the Pac-12 network. One of the top recruits in the country. Fun. Lock is up. Well handled by Bryce Bark. And Bryce Bark for Cal has played in a lot of different positions at the top pair, I believe at the second and third player, but she likes to drop off the net. That time she stayed with a nice press over for Cal. Yeah, Bark a senior for this team and to your point, I mean, she didn't see a serve all year in 2015 when she was partnered with Schultz. Last year was with Rodberg and it was a very different story, a really well-developed player. Brad Keenan, you mentioned him, the head coach of Arizona State. After graduating so much talent, he's got a big challenge ahead of him. He certainly does, and that was one of the things he told us. He's trying to get some big players uh, who can have a presence at the net. He has some, some smaller, scrappy players. He'd love to see Ellie Lundberg play as a defender in the future, but as for now, he doesn't have the height and length at the net to put her as a defender. But if he does, then he gains another strong pair. Yeah, and he's another one who went from indoor to Beach, uh, four-time ABCA All-American, two-time National Player of the Year at Pepperdine before becoming a pro in the sand. He was amazing. One of the best servers I've ever seen. He's got such long arms and nice long reach and a big block way over the net. Yeah, and he's everything that a coach would want, right? I mean, he was Rookie of the Year in 2006, Most Improved Player in 2007, Best Server on the AVP in 2014, so just kept growing his game. Taking a look at the four pairs, Marino and Schaefer, a sizable lead on Cross and Flood. Meanwhile, Carballo, Lundberg, Bark, and Duick trading points back and forth. Carballo serve, splits the two. Because of that serve, little tweak in the pass. Uh, Cal's forced to go out of the middle, and that's where Ellie Lundberg's able to cut off the angles at the block at the net. All tied up on court number three. Second set of action across all five courts at Bear Down Beach. Ellie Lundberg is from the Bay Area, San Francisco, and she came down to Los Angeles and trained all summer on the beach, really committed to getting better at the beach game. She came in as an unexperienced beach player, but a great athlete, and you see the progress she's made, making a huge contribution for Arizona State. And so in keeping with Lundberg, number 10 for Arizona State, what was the biggest improvement from the beginning of the summer to now that you've seen in her? Well, I think just overall confidence in the game, just just knowing what to do in certain situations. Obviously, her ball control technique improves. The more you touch the ball, the more you compete that experience and knowing different situations. So I would say her overall game uh, really improved dramatically. Now, when she was training this summer, did she train with Caitlin Carballo, who's from that area? She did. She trained with Caitlin Carballo, but with a lot of different players who were also working on their game. Interesting. See how much time you get with a certain partner as well. Let's take a look at the replay. Good. Just long. Good idea on that shot, but when you're missing that ball wide, you got to finish your hand into the court. Locked. Handled by Bryce Bark. Arizona State making some ball control errors, and Cal really capitalizing right now.
Pac-12 Beach Volleyball is brought to you by State Farm, here to help life go right. You don't need an ocean for beach volleyball. We are in the middle of the desert, Tucson, Arizona, for the Wildcats Spring Challenge. And let's pop over to court number one. Second set of action. Cal's Alexia Inman and Mima Mirkovic. One set number one. But set two is a little bit of a different story as they trade blows back and forth. That last play we talked about earlier in this match, Quinn Johnson blocking something else. She was blocking angle. Mia Rivera was just late moving to the line. I like changing the defense, giving the other team a different look. But you have to capitalize on it and be ready to score. That ball set too tight to the net, and Alexa Inman just gobbles it up. Big point going up 10-8 in the second set for Cal. It really says a lot about the future for Cal that their one pairs are these freshmen. They're ranked 14th in the nation. Megan Owusu has done great things with this program. Well, I'll tell you, a huge addition for Cal, and I think a game changer, is the addition to Derek Olson on the staff. This is his first year. He's an AVP pro. He knows the game. He's got a great technical and strategic mind, has coached for USA Junior Development Program, and he's really been a game changer, according to the athletes at Cal. You know, the seniors for this Cal team are the first beach-only group in the program, so Cal has gone from having very few beach-only players to players coming in and committing to the sand. Yeah, that's, I mean, anytime you have athletes who are year-round committed to getting better on the beach, spending their summers playing and competing in tournaments and training all summer long, they're going to come in and make an impact and make your program better. Mirkovic in the sand to pass that one. Quinn Johnson on two, Mirkovic digs. Inman, she looks impressed. Or sorry, Inman and dig. That was Mia, Miver Mia Rivera, excuse me. Yeah, er Mia Rivera just sees the game well and she waits till the opportunity presents itself to get that kill and end that long rally. And while we stepped away from court number three, it has built a big gap as Carballo and Lundberg, who won set number one, have, have fallen behind Bark and Duick. Beautiful kill by Ellie Lundberg. It started with a pretty good pass. Caitlin Carballo puts up a hittable set, <clears throat> and Ellie Lundberg stays aggressive. But right now, Arizona State is on the side with the wind at their back, which is considered the bad side. So they need to score points if they want to get back in the second set. I believe that's the third service error from Caitlin Carballo in this set alone and then add that to a couple ball control errors and, and that puts Cal in a position uh, to be leading. Right, and you've talked about what a weapon her top spin jump serve is, so kind of one of their main point scorers. Yeah, we, when, you're, when that's not working for you, you have to find other ways to score and you need to steady out the rest of your game to make up for it. Now Lundberg behind the line to serve. Off the net and good. Good aggressive serve. Catches the top of the tape. It trickles down for the Arizona State ace. Up. And Cuddy handled well by Bryce Bark. She is one of the seniors that Megan Owusu built this camp, this program with. And Megan Owusu just announced yesterday as one of the 30 under 30, which it, by the AVCA, which is the uh, people making an impact in the sport of volleyball. And uh, Megan Owusu, the Cal head beach volleyball coach in that group. That's yeah. an elite group. The people under 30 years old, the 30 most influential people. Of course, Megan Wusu has been with this program since the beginning. She was uh, working with indoor program first. You may know her as Megan Schmidt. She was married in the off season. And she played indoor for Rich Feller as captain in 2010. Two final four appearances. Of course, you remember that 2010 terrific season for that program. Yeah, she was part of that Carly Lloyd era at Cal, which was a good one. Over, over. Yes. 
big heavy hand by Lundberg. When Carballo and Lundberg are in system, that means their first contact is in a good location, they can put up a good set and both of them know how to put the ball away. But it's that first and second contact they really need to focus on. Well, as you look, Carballo and Bryce Bark both played for the same club, Elite Beach Volleyball out of Manhattan Beach. Were they paired together at all during those years? Well, no, because Caitlin's only a sophomore and Bryce oh, right. is a senior. senior. But but a lot of the players have played and shared the club experience together. And anytime you can spend your high school playing beach volleyball, you're going to come to college with so much more beach experience and beach savvy. Well, speaking of elite beach volleyball, we went over to court number four now, where, where Mia Marino split the difference right between the two. She was a junior this season, also out of elite beach volleyball. Marino Schaefer leading cross and flood. She's a great experienced defender who I talked about had back issues but she has been an amazing player her entire three years at Cal and has all the shots and power. You see right there, that is an experienced shot. You, she used to love to just hammer, hammer, hammer. This year, choosing to use more shots, and that's smart. Six-point lead for Marino and Schaefer. Of course, they have had a lot of success this year. 14-1 and one record this season as partners at the four spot. They are, for me, a perfect combination. Me and Marino, the experienced beach player, with a paired with a very physical. Uh, she's an indoor player, you know, transitioning to the beach. But those two together really complement each other well. Yeah. Schaefer at the net and then Marino behind. And at 14 and 1, they're one of the top four pairs in the country, meaning four pairs, not top four groups together, meaning it's so important to have the depth in your program. And when you can count on a win out of your fours consistently, that really shows that you've arrived. Definitely. Depth is everything when you want to make uh, a big move on the national picture and ranking. Cal has never been a part of the NCAA championship in Gulf Shores, Alabama. The way that it is set up is three from the west, three from the east, and two at large. Cal trying to work their way into a very tough field. You can say that again. When you've got <laughs> Hawaii, Long Beach State, UCLA, USC, and Pepperdine in your region. Yeah. And Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, now the fifth ranked team in the country. It's not going to be easy. Marino unloads between the defenders and... Cal continues to roll a six-point lead. If they're able to win this set, they put the first point of the duel on the board. And Cal serving into the wind. You feel the wind in our face. We're on the same side that Cal is right now. Caroline Schaefer, Schaefer will serve and run to the net. Marino sets. Block just waiting for it. Katie Cross all over it. Katie Cross is really physical. She's from Flagstaff, Arizona, 5'11 junior. Transfer from South Carolina, coming back home to Arizona. Marino passes. That's just pretty. Just Beautiful sliced. arm swing. And I love the set by Caroline Schaefer. You know, when you're a freshman and you're learning to play the beach game, the toughest skill is setting. And she put up a beautiful ball for Mia Marina right there on the kill. Match point. Little ball drops in. And Arizona State will stay alive, but they've got a hole to dig out of. Marino and Schaefer won set number one and are at, set, are at match point number two. And all they need is one side out from the bad side, wind at their back, but they've got a nice cushion. Serving at Marino. She adjusts to the set, and that will do it. As at Cal's pair, Caroline Schaefer and Mia Marino improved to 15 and 1 as a pair and put the first point of this duel on the board. The Cal Golden Bears leading the Arizona State Sand Devils or Sun Devils 1 0. Good win at the fours spot, and they continue to roll. Cal can count on their fours pair. Court number five, and now Kate Baldwin and Samantha Plaster versus Maddie Micheletti and Grace Campbell. 
Kate Baldwin and Samantha Plaster, both freshmen. Kate Baldwin, a very quick defender who extends every rally. When you watch her play, she just is everywhere. You see a jump, serve, float, ace to the middle for Arizona State by Kate Baldwin. Yeah, and they need it. They are trailing by seven. Cows, Micheletti, and Campbell won set number one as well. Off the tape. What a dig. Beautiful dig. Second time, though, Cal able to put it down, and now it is match point for Cal's Micheletti and Campbell versus Baldwin and Plaster. Grace Campbell and Maddie Micheletti, again from the same volleyball club, Elite Beach Volleyball Club. Grace is a junior. Maddie Micheletti, just a freshman, but very experienced in the sand. And that does it for the match as Campbell and Micheletti sweep Baldwin and Plaster. Cal picks up another point in the duel that quickly, and Cal now leading this duel two to nothing over Arizona State. Let's lots go to of, the action on court number two. Lots of tight action. Court number two, Ia Lindahl siding out with a dribbler dropping into the sharp cut. Ia Lindahl and Jessica Gaffney for Cal really love strategizing and playing this game at the cerebral level, which is, is a fun way to play because it makes you really focus on what you need to do as a team to win. Yeah, and they are focused indeed. It's a 12-4 run for Cal in this set. They have just run away with it. No one on. Straight down the middle. A nice answer by Sydney Palmer. Sydney Palmer going deep middle, and she's opting to run that back set to make the blocker and defense move and get uncomfortable, and it's working. On the side switch, Megan, formerly Schmidt Awusu, talking with her Cal players for a few moments. Both Gaffney and Lindahl looking at the sand, trying to figure out a strategy from the bad side. Walker pulling off. Palmer, little shot picked up. Just long and Cal staying in the rally, digging a couple balls, unable to put them away, but put the pressure back on Arizona State who makes the hitting error to end the rally. Cal has served Palmer every ball in this set. Gaffney now back to serve. The trend continues. I think Palmer likes it. She certainly does. In regardless of the win, Cindy Palmer runs a back set. I, I saw that from the other side. She was running a back set into the win, and that time she used worked with the win. So I think she's just comfortable moving that block around for Arizona State. Ball is long. And it is now match point for Gaffney and Lindahl of Cal. If Cal is able to win this point, this match, they win the duel against Arizona State. Straight down the middle. And it'll come down to Gaffney attacking. Puts it away. Match and duel to Cal. And Jessica Gaffney using her length at the net powers it down to finish the set and duel. Cal's been super impressive so far today. Lots of experienced beach players, and you can tell the depth and the level of play has jumped dramatically for the Cal Beach Volleyball Program. Very exciting. Cal wins the duel, but the action hasn't finished. We're going to continue as they play the completion here at Bear Down Beach. We go back to court number one. Reminder that Inman and Mirkovic won set number one. Mirkovic looking for it, catches the line. And Mirkovic heads over.
forgetting to bring her partner, Alexia Inman, but up 19-16 in this second set. Switching to the good side, the side with the wind in their face where you can be more aggressive from the service line and offensively at the net. No one on. Wow, Mia Rivera tags the back line. Mima Murkovic was in the right location, but thought that ball carried out and just tags the back line for the Arizona State 17th point. Blocker pulling off, Quinn Johnson pulls off, and Inman ends up sending it in the net. Cal needs to do a better job taking care of the end of this set. Using the win, small game, pass forward, get your feet to the ball to attack. Inman again, this time Johnson stays up, puts it right back at her. Mirkovic finds a way. Quinn Johnson touching so many balls at the net for Arizona State. Alexia Inman covering herself twice. And then Mima Murkovic says, I am ready to end this. <laughs> it's over when I say it's over. Match point for Inman and Mirkovic. Little shot, Mirkovic puts it up and into the net. Unretrievable. Good touch by Mirkovic. Able to touch it, just not control it high enough for her partner. This is an important play right here for Cal. You do not want to extend it. You need a side out play. Johnson serving. Inman. Inman. And it is in. Yep. Alexa Inman, smart side out play, high over the block of Quinn Johnson. And Cal up 4-0. Yep, one court of action still continuing on the threes. Second set taken by Bark and Duick of Cal, and so that one split, and it's at a third set now of action. Holly, a third set, very different in this matchup. Let's go now to our state farm and get to a better state. It was the two pair of Gaffney and Lindahl clinching it for Cal. Jessica Gaffney retreats off the net, makes a big dig, and an aggressive approach hammers that ball down with an exclamation point for Cal. And that's the one that put it away at 3-0. And then, of course, Inman and Mirkovic continue with another win. And the action still continuing on court number three now with Lundberg, Carallo, Bark, and Duick split. And uh, before our State Farm play of the game, I was talking to you about how set number three is very different. How do you approach it differently? Well, it's one play at a time. It's a short game to 15. You have to win by two, but you have to manage every point, every side change, and just focus on what's in front of you. Uh, uh, Lundberg Carballo dominated the first set and made way too many errors. In the second set, Cal capitalized. Now it's all even, but if you look at it, Cal probably has the advantage in terms of momentum winning that set second set. And there's, the way that volleyball, beach volleyball and college game is approached is differently. Sometimes it comes down to the final pair still playing. Today, it doesn't. But these pairs are still playing for their own record, for their experience. Perhaps they'll be moving up or down in their team's one through five slots. There's a lot on the line. Absolutely. And Ellie Lundberg gets a nice cross-court kill to go up 8-6 in this third set for Arizona State, trying to get that lone win for the Sun Devils. How about Bryce Bark working out of the middle, using her length with a kill down the middle. You want a hitter to hit out of the middle sometimes because they don't have the sharp angles. But this time, just long Bryce Bark goes deep middle for the kill. 88 degrees here at Bear Down Beach, the first of five duels today. All of them brought to you by Pac-12 Networks. A two-day tournament, three more duels tomorrow for the Wildcat Spring Challenge. Put away. Nope. And it's another opportunity for the Sand Devils. That ball set too tight for Ellie Lundberg and Bryce Bark capitalizes. 
This ball blows tight, and then Bryce Park, she's got long arms, moves her feet well, able to direct that ball the other way. Big swing, looking for the touch, and it didn't happen. Arizona State frustrated Ellie Lundberg, went up aggressively, swung at that ball, thinking she got a piece of Bryce Bark, but Cal saying no touch. And most importantly, the official is agreeing with her. No one on. It's just wide the way that Carballo turned it. Back-to-back -back errors for Arizona State, and you cannot do that in a third set. Looks like Arizona State calling a timeout, and they're going to talk to their coach about it. Brad Keenan with his players now talking to them. I mean, all it takes right now is they side out the ball nine and they score a real point. It's all tied up tens and they switch to the good side. But if you're Cal, you really want to put your foot on the gas. Arizona State's made back-to-back -back errors. Keep the pressure on them. So you, if you're Cal, your goal is to switch 12-8. Well, we've now gotten a look at the 14th ranked Cal team and out of the pairs that we've seen so far today, who has impressed you? Well, I thought, well, Gaffney and Lindahl were fun to watch, but Mia Marino and Caroline Schaefer, I like the chemistry, I like the way they play together. They were just really in control of their match. I liked watching them. Yeah, the 15-1 and one record completely makes sense when you see them play. Definitely. That's a very strong fours pair. Mia Marino used to be the ones pair for Cal. Now she's at the fours. And she's got all that experience. She's got a long, tall freshman in front of her, learning, getting better all the time. So I like the way they play. Yeah, she received the majority of serves there as well because she is the smaller player. And we saw her with a variety of shots, hammering the ball. Taking a look at Cal's record this season, 15-3, and three, including this dual win. Four and two in the Pac-12. And there's a look at Megan Owusu, formerly Megan Schmidt, the head coach of Cal. With all the teams that have adjusted their monikers for beach volleyball from Stetson, Mad Hatters to the Sandy Hats, Arizona State to the Sand Devils. But Cal staying with the Golden Bears. Referee is getting off his stand to check the ball mark. And Arizona State stops the run. They get a side out just tagging the sideline. Now just down by one. And that's the big cha challenge you talked about. They wanted to switch at 12-8, a significant point. And that win we've talked about, dead for the moment. Beautiful cutty, Bryce Bark. Bryce Bark has a beautiful cut shot. Looks like the ball's going past her hitting shoulder. She reaches over and redirects the ball into the sharp angle. Beautiful cut shot by Bryce Bark, the senior captain for Cal. Bark and Duick with a two-point lead in a short set that only goes to 15. Staying behind it, no one on. Bark up. Pops it. How about that? Bryce Bark known for being a great pull defender. That means she starts at the net, pulls off, it plays defense, and then gets a transition set that she pokes over the block of Ellie Lundberg. Do it, sir. Solid slam, but it is Doug Carballo now with an opportunity. Great defensive work by Duick. Looking for the back line. It was long. Cal is just steady, touching lots of balls, keeping it in play. And these two Arizona State Sun Devils, they're, they're trying to be aggressive, but they're making too many errors in this third set. On well, the way that Cal is playing, any errors are too many errors. Duick was really impressive defensively there. Bark, pokes, twice. 
Another opportunity. Bryce Bart cleaning things up at the net. And Maddie Duick just running balls down behind the long block of Bryce Bark. Cal has already won the duel. Will they be able to sweep? Ball is long, and Cal does. Bark and Duick, after falling in the first set, takes sets two and three. And that's coming back from a loss in the first set. You have that momentum winning that second set. Impressive win by Cal, 5-0. 14th ranked California Golden Bears living up to the billing in the first duel of the Wildcat Spring Challenge. Arizona State Sun Devils will be playing Stetson again later today. They'll get an opportunity to kind of tighten things up before they make the trip home to Para, where they have a senior day tomorrow. Well, I think you learn from these types of losses. How can we capitalize? What can we do better? And then figuring out a way to deal with the wind. We're going to take a brief break at Bear Down Beach. Four more jewels today on Pac-12 Network. Cal wins this one over Arizona State. Saturday, Colorado Mesa, Arizona.